Hello and welcome to Nagash Architecture. I'm Ofonime, and in this video, I'm going to visualize and remodel a duplex apartment in twin motion. We have a Revit model here, and we're going to make some slight changes to it to actually include some extra features that are useful for the building. And then we'll go on to add the material and the environment to try and make it look more realistic. So we have the model of our building here. You can actually just look around it and get an idea of what the building looks like it's kind of like a mix of extrusion and walls and then we have glass windows of course and a roof the roof is kind of like a flat roof with extrusions as well so it's modeled using mass as well as normal walls and we have a road in front so we're going to try to move this into in motion i'm going to use the data smith plugin this time i notice it's quite it's quicker and it also avoids this lines this levels from actually showing in the model when we move it into twin motion so we're going to go to export the datasmith file to prepare it to go into twin motion we can actually save this i call this september project but we just call it something else now september extrusion how do you spell okay yeah i think that's correct extrusion so we're here in twin motion and the first thing i want to do is to actually remove this pedestal the default pedestal that is there so we have a starting base and then of course there's a okay i think this was supposed to just delete just delete the starting base and it's gone so we're going to import our building model but instead of using geometry this time we're going to use direct link you can already see that the september project is already locked in as the source so it doesn't really matter what you can actually leave everything unchecked and then go ahead and just click import now that the model is imported although we don't see it we have to go over to revit and then synchronize so now that we are on revit what we have to do is to go into the data smith menu and then go over to synchronize you can also confirm the com the connections that everything is correct as it should be and you can see that yes stream motion september project is available that's what's connected so go on and click synchronize and once that's done we'll see the twin motion model the twin motion model or the revit model in twin motion so this is what we have to work with and this is the import so there's a little there's a lot of work to be done to actually turn this into a complete building you can see that the first or first things first the starting ground for twin motion is interfering with the ground in the revit model so we're going to have to make some changes there so let me just zoom out a bit so we get a feel of what the building looks like in twin motion right now you can right click to actually uncheck a selection in case you had one selection turned up you can actually right click to unselect it so this is the building it's in a vast desert of tiles <laughs> so first i'm going to just select the folder here on the right you can see that the september project is actually in one folder you can select that folder instead of selecting elements one by one like this you can go over to select just the folder and then you can you have access to the entire building so i'm going to move this up by like oh too quick that's like 20 something okay i think 12 is good so we're going to leave it there at 12 and then so we have our road now we have our building in the environment now you can use one two three four i think the gizmo here actually shows you how fast you can go the speed that you can use to move around so one two three four five six enables you to move faster so i can go on to press five and then run really quick into the building that's still too slow six yep there we go that's fast as it should be so five okay so we, we have our building now so what we have to do is start replacing the replacing the building materials with what we actually want so i'm going to start with the brick and i'm going to replace it with the twin motion brick so into the materials column now we have bricks in twin motion and then we have clean brick it looks really really nice really fancy and i may not even end up using brick in the end so if i might end up changing it to something else so but let's just start with the brick and see clean brick number two i can move this straight ahead and just drag it over to the twin motion model and you see that it's looking like carpet so we have to actually change the scale and then scrolling down in the materials menu on the right hand side you can scroll all the way down to scale and then you can see it you can type in the number that you want let's try 2.5 it doesn't still show us the brick as we want it to be so i'm going to try 5.0 now and well it's getting there but we could still use some we could still use an additional scale so let's try 7.5 yeah this is starting to look like a way normal brick should look and looking at the way it is now i'm considering changing the brick entirely so we may not want to use a brick building but perhaps we might just leave it it depends we'll just see how the design process goes on so that's for the brick we can go on to replace the ceiling material as well it looks like exposed concrete here this ceiling material that i'm seeing so i can go on to replace that model as well and over to materials you can switch to ceilings and then we have an nw 60 by 60 
is the very first one so i'm going to actually go on to select that and see what it does so that's the, what the ceiling looks like again you can see that it looks really tiny so it means you just have to move the scale up instead of typing i can actually just move the slider to the left or to the right to increase the scale of the ceiling so we have at 5.5 now this is 6.5 i think 6.5 looks good so it gives us a good number of ceiling squares to work with and that's not very bad so i do like the way that is okay hold on let me just make it 7.5 as well um okay no i prefer 6.5 now you notice that i left doorways or door openings instead of normal doors when working with revit but that's because i prefer the twin motion doors what i like to do is to use the door that is available in twin motion instead of using the revit door because the revit door doesn't swing open and close if you import it from revit into twin motion so you can go into objects and then select doors in twin motion rotating doors and then we have a plain door that doesn't have glass something very simple like this rotating door four let's just drag this into the space that has the door opening and then you notice it starts to glow like this and just let go and then it latches on and the moment you move closer to the oh that's too fast the moment you get closer to the door like this it just opens its doorway for you and then you can actually walk into the building it looks slightly more realistic this way so that's why i selected this option so let's take a break from the building itself we'll come back to it much later in the video but we're going to look at the road and the pavement so what we want to do is to switch the asphalt that is selected for this road this is normal rivet asphalt bitumen that is just black no surfacing and all this kind of stuff you can actually drop down the brightness or limit of this asphalt but what we want to do is to actually replace the asphalt material with the asphalt material that is in twin motion so if we go over to twin motion and then check ground asphalt is under man-made <coughs> under man-made you can go on to select this and then you find asphalt as number one there's also asphalt number four i think it's slightly brighter so we're going to pick this this the other versions of asphalt to be honest well asphalt number seven so let's go with asphalt six and then drag it and drop it on the sphere that is here now asphalt six is slightly brighter and then you can also turn down the luminosity if that's not if that's something that feels is too bright you can turn you can turn down the luminosity like this but again you would notice that this fear the scale doesn't actually show us what we want to see as the surface of asphalt it still looks very smooth so you can go back to the scale and then dial it all the way up and the higher you go the, the clearer it becomes so you can see that the roughness as it should be for asphalt is now back there if we zoom much closer to this surface you can see that this is the way the asphalt is supposed to look so if you zoom all the way out it has that rough surface that roads normally have so the next thing we're going to include for the road is is to add some road markings just to make it look slightly more realistic but for road markings we'll find that in the object category so go over to object and then select decals decals actually represents the road marking so there's dash marking and then there's just a single straight line marking so we're going to pick the dash but first we have to look at the building i think from if, from the top view you can use your left mouse to actually hover over the building or orbit over the building like this if you use the right the right mouse to right click and hold it kind of has a different kind of movement around it so we're going to use the left mouse click just to lean up like this to see the building from above and then we can have a better angle as to how we're going to apply this road dash marking so just go over here and then drag it on okay it looks wonky one side so we're going to rotate it you can use this round hemisphere or semi hemisphere and then rotate the road marking the way we want so that's by 90 degree and once that's done we're going to center it into the middle like this now let's just start from the beginning somewhere here that looks good now the road needs more markings so we're going to just hold on to the shift key and hold on to the red slider here on the gizmo just let the mouse hover over this and then slide it neatly to the left so that just copies over one other instance of the road markings and then you can choose to select an instance what will happen if you select the instance is that it has its own properties and then you can go on to make changes to either markings and it will not affect the other if i go on to select copy it's going to copy the other dash markings into the second slot and whatever changes i make to the first one is going to apply to the second one which is actually what i prefer so let's go on for copy and i hold on to this and shift this the dash markings one more time into this left hand side and select copy so we've gotten our road markings on either side of the road it looks good now slightly more realistic than it should and or than it was before and we have everything that we need so the next 
selection or point of selection we're going to i like i actually like the cobblestone that came with revit so i want to leave this as it is but what i'm going to do is to include a kind of roughness on the material so i'm going to go onto the material picker here and then select this material because it's outside i expect that there's going to be wear and tear on this surface so i'm going to just go over the grunge grunge applies wear and tear to surfaces so just go over to this and then slide it slightly to the right okay that seems like too much grunge and let's just leave it somewhere between 30 and 40 let's say 35 is quite good so it just gives you that realistic feel that when you're outside there's going to be wear and tear on the surface it kind of adds that feel to the way the building's ground is now i'm going to cheat here a little bit i don't want to include any interior design in this building it's not going to be an interior render just the exterior so i'm going to darken the windows and what i'm going to do is to select materials go back to glass and then look for a reflective glass i'm going to choose the reflective glass and then i can just drag this over to the windows yeah so it's still transparent so i can go back to the material use the material picker okay it's already selected and then darken that color instead of white i'm going to change the color to a dark shade and let me just take a sneak peek at the window that i'm looking for so yeah i think this is this is preferable so i'm going to just click ok and the window should be dark enough so we don't really bother about what's happening inside the building so and the first or the next material i'm going to look at is this facade that is above here i want it to be like a kind of rough material that is somewhat gray okay i need to find the color that matches with this brick so it's going to be something else i don't know exactly what color i'm going to use so we'll go to the materials picker first and then over to wall coverings and okay this rough casting looks good because I, I need it to be rough first then the color will we can actually worry about the color later so that's the material picker that we're looking for go over to this just use the material picker to select and then pick the rough casting and rough coating and then move it in there we're going to scale it all the way up so we see what we're looking for yeah it's currently horizontal and that isn't a problem exactly but i'm going to rotate this to be like 90 degrees so i can use this to change this to 90 degree in the rotation column down here and change that to 90 so it's now straight going from up to down so that's what we're looking for now the color is going to be a different problem i need to find a color that actually blends well with this brown brick that we're working with so uh, let me just try and move this blue not really nice yellow nope oh my goodness what am i doing right now okay this looks quite nice i need to keep that shade of brick yeah this looks good so we'll work with this for now i'm just going to leave it at that it looks kind of funny but doesn't really matter right now so i decided against the brick and went for a white plaster coating to try and match with this navy blue design that i have here to try and make the colors consistent and i also have a blue door and for some reason i want to change this door to match or to have the same color as this other plaster coating that i have here so up oh, doesn't really change much but yeah it should have a similar color to what we have as a plastic coating outside so the next thing that i want to do is the environment but before we get there we're going to change the floor from wood it's currently set to wood but the wood here that we have is the is the revit default wood material and i want to change it to a twin motion wood material so go back to the library and then in the library we're going to look for wood surfaces and then look for the floor surfaces there's a lot of wall panel surfaces here they do look like wall panel there's chestnut um i'm looking for something that matches or is in contrast to the whites that we have here so this chestnut looks good i'm just going to hover over this and drop it on there now we can't really notice because there's a lot of reflection so i'm going to just lean it up a bit like this and then of course change the scale that's usually the first thing that goes into my mind of course change the scale all the way up to yeah there we go so now we do have what we're looking for you're going to see it from above as well because it shares the same material so this is what it should look like it's weird to have a roof that looks like this obviously it looks like a floor right now but that's what it's going to be it shares the same material with this guy down here because the lighting is so dark you can actually see it and in some rooms inside the building you're also going to have the floor that is wooden but we're not going into the building right now so the next point of call that we're going to look at is the environment currently we are in the desert and we need to change that so back to the library beginnings and then under vegetation we can find landscape and then have a 
rocky grassland landscape applied to this because I want to have mountains in the background where we can go on to fill in some trees and some hilly and hilly terrain valleys and all this kind of stuff included so yeah this is the default landing of the rocky grassland and we still see that some regions are well still showing the ground layer with some kind of tile so we're going to go into the ambience and try to remove some of these other layers scrolling all the way up we have starting ground i'm going to uncheck this option and yeah once that's done we're back to what we're looking for so this is the kind of rocky grassland that i'm looking for i'm going to need to now move the landscape slightly up to try and bring it closer to okay that's not actually moving and close this and then scroll all the way down to the rocky grasslands okay now that we have the rocky glass grasslands in sight this is what we have so this is the view of the building or the view of the rocky grassland from where the building is so we're going to move this slightly upward instead of dragging it up i'm actually going to type 10 and see how far it takes us into the building so you can use f the letter f to actually zoom in and out of it so if i select the rotating door now i can press f to jump me all the way back to where that door is and i can now zoom out from that using letter s or e or d just much like you're playing a video game really and you can see just distance that 10 gave us in the rocky grassland so i'm going to select the rocky grassland again and look for the gizmo of the rocky grassland and see how we can actually move it up i can't find the gizmo of the rocky grassland but nevertheless i'm going to cheat here a bit i'm going to move the surface of this ground much closer to where the house is you can select the raise button here and then go on to in use the paintbrush that you see here in this region try to mold these terrain to actually bring bring it a lot closer to where the house is so you can go on to click here step by step Oop, too much you can go on to just click it one by one try to drag the terrain to be closer to where the building is supposed to be you can always hover over it like this we're just going to try our best to mold the terrain to actually bring it to where we want it to be try to raise this much closer to where the building is so now we don't want to have that gap in between i could easily have just raised using the gizmo to raise the rocky grasslands much closer to the building but i think i prefer this other method so now that we have the rocky terrain much closer to where the ground or much closer to where the house is we can now start putting some vegetation like trees and flowers oops we do have something laying out here so you can go ahead and just depress this and get it to go down yeah so that looks better so for the vegetation i'm going to paint trees around the building so i'm going to use um the instead of the sculpt i'm going to go for paint and in paint you can see oh this is the veg this is the rocky grassland paint we're looking for a vegetation paint so i'm going to just uncheck this option and uncheck the rocky grassland as well you can actually right click to uncheck options and then now we don't have anything selected we can go over to vegetation paint so what i'm going to do is to go over to populate right in the bottom center bottom here select populate and then under populate you're going to see the foliage in foliage you can select paint foliage this is where we can actually drag in trees and grasses and stuff like that into the environment and then use it to paint over the rocky grassland so i'm going to select this one tree first um banyan i do like banyan the way it looks so we're going to have the one banyan tree here and then this little leaf linden i'm going to include it and just to hover over the over the rocky grassland to have this trees populate i'm also going to look for smaller trees as well to just to make it have some variation like an actual forest and now that we have our trees selected we can go ahead and just paint over the environment like this and then have the twin motion software populate the environment with trees of different kinds so now that we have our trees in the setting we have to do it all around i'm going to actually exclude this region that has a road envisaging that the road actually continues up to that region so we're just going to continue you can use your right click and hold to pan over it and then in the right hand side here you can use the erase tool to actually delete some of the trees that you already painted but since i want to keep painting i'm just going to continue with them just like that just keep painting over it and then have the paintbrush include all the trees that we need and even after you've included most of these trees you can still go on to edit the density of the trees and the number of trees that you have in your paint selection and then even here you can select one tree and then see the density of that tree that you want go on to increase them the increase the number of that tree in the selection that you've done or you can reduce the number of that tree in the selection and then have a lot more variety of trees so we're just going to go about painting more trees <laughs> we're going to try to ignore that other part where there's supposed to be a road we can go about including more trees in this region here and have it just cover everywhere now that we've gotten what we want we can see the view of our building from this region with the trees selected and painted in the environment we can see just what our twin motion model looks like with those trees included okay 
I actually don't like the look of this anymore. So I'm going to delete the painted ve um, the painted vegetation first. I'm going to just hold a cell. I can actually select it from here and just delete that. But I'm going to delete the painted vegetation. It's probably a good idea, but it doesn't work for me in this scenario. So I could just go on to remove that and the rocky grasslands as well. I'm going to delete that. So what we have here is completely nothing. So we have to replace it with replace this with something else. So I'm going to use a I'm going to use a HDRI image environment so hdr image is actually quite good so i can go on to enable this and then select something that i want not noon clear day i'm going to use a backdrop hdri instead of the sky doom so with the backdrop hdri once you just turn that on you can see that we're in a kind of like grassy environment but our road again is stuck in the ground so we have to actually pull that up so i'm going to use the building this time and pull the building up instead of just the road so i'm going to go back to this september 2023 project select that and then hold on to it and drag it slowly or first it might be too slow right now because i'm using ultra so i'm going to change this quality all the way down to low so i have some speed to work with and then yeah now that we're back in low it should be quicker now so just hold on to the gizmo and then slide the building up slowly above the ground oops too slow okay now that we have our building in there it looks the way we want it to and it's not in such a weird kind of environment that looks like an open field that is just completely grass so i noticed that my dash marking is missing so i'm going to have to undo this back to where it was before and then once that's done i'm going to have to select the building and the dash markings at the same time so i'm going to select each of them one by one as to where the dash marking stops so they actually continue they actually follow us you get okay even the rotating doors we're going to have to select these rotating doors as well every other thing that we selected in the building because they weren't part of that original building folder we have to select them one after the other and then move them along with the gizmo so everybody comes together at the same time yeah that looks that looks better now so this is exactly what we're looking for we can now go ahead and apply trees to this although this hdri environment already comes with trees but we can go ahead and apply our own trees to this building model or to this building environment i see a road here in the hdri so next i'm going to add the car to bring it into this building garage this mini garage that is here so we're going to select object okay no cars are not an object it's under vehicles and i'm probably going to use a different car okay let's try this sedan 06 i'm just going to drag the car into the environment here it's currently on low resolution so the car isn't going to look really crisp right now but we can just place it in space then zoom in just to get a field or a view of what we're looking for and then of course you can change the color of the car to maybe wine red something like that dark red oh, not too dark vivid red looks good and yeah so that's we can just go and attach the car and then of course change our settings presets to medium which is like working and then we have much better lighting and then have our car in between just like that and then we can obviously go into the hdri and try to rotate rotate the sun so you can get a clear view of what the car looks like from this region here and yeah so that, that road also kind of matches this one so that that would be actually a good place to go so we're, we're slowly getting what we're looking for now so this is what's left is to add our trees in the background and maybe flowers at the edge of the building like this so i'm going to include a hedge oops that was too quick in movement i'm going to include a hedge around this building so on the object i think yes on the object you can look for miscellaneous in in objects okay not object vegetation miscellaneous misc yeah we can have a laurel hedge and leafy hedge so you can go on to apply this to the laurel hedge you can have it in here and obviously i'm going to copy this left and right of each side of the building so i can hold on to shift and then move it slightly upward using the gizmo and of course select a copy because whatever i do to this first one is going to affect the second one so i can do the same thing and slide it to the right again select copy you can also put in the number that you want so i'm just going to move this again one more time since it's just the one and then select copy what i'm going to do is to select oops is to select one to hold on to ctrl select the second one the third one and the fourth one and then use the shift again hold on to the red slider bar here and then move it 
again to the side call this a copy as well and then I can rotate this one 100 and, or 90 degrees and then move it oh it's actually much shorter than we expected so we're going to have to delete some of those hedges now so we can hold on to the first one and delete it hold on to the last one and delete it as well since we just need two first and the second one hold on to CTR to select them both and then slide it a little to the left closer to the second one so we have our hedge now now that our hedge is selected we should probably include one in the back but we're just going to leave it that way and then go on to attach or plant a tree we already have trees in the background so that's useful and another good aspect of using hdri images like this so we can go on to select banyan and bring in that tree into this region here and see if it actually matches what we're looking for it's a small tree so i'm going to just pick a different one i don't like the way that one looks and it really doesn't depend it's when it comes to selecting trees you can use your user discretion or you can just choose one that matches the environment that you're working with uh this one probably looks better than the last one and we're just going to include that and then allow it to be there and then that could just be the one tree since there are going to be other trees in the background let's see this japanese perch we can go on to include as well just in the back to try and blend in with all the other trees in the background so let's just have it somewhere in there move it you can use the gizmo like this and just move it to the left and to the right so you have another tree supporting the other one so we're going to include more trees along this side of the building so japanese walnuts not bad just go on to select one of the trees and just hold it in and drag it in there we're going to use the same tree oh this sweet gum looks good it's a much bigger tree than the, all the other ones that we've included so you can add a lot more life to the building yeah with more trees included we're almost done with our exterior rendering of a building the last thing that is left for us to do now is to actually take an image of this obviously there's a lot more you can go on to artistically including the building to make it a lot more detailed but we can go into export now first we need to take an image of this picture we need to take an image of this frame and the way it is just go on to select the import select the media from this region here and then choose the right frame that you're looking for for this building just swipe it like this we're using wasd to try and move left and right and then you can from the media you can select images here in the bottom left corner and then click the plus sign to actually take a snapshot of that image you can go on to make changes to the image as you see fit as you want so this is the weather forecast you can go on to change that to winter weather summer or autumn that you want i'm just going to leave it as default and you can also include rainy season go on to include rain in the surfaces and constant rain falling i'm just going to leave everything clear as it is and then go on to include other effects like exposure i can change this to have less exposure than it should so that's going to be minus 0.85 it makes it slightly darker than it should be so i'm just going to make it minus 0.95 just to give it that dim feel you can obviously increase it anyhow you want i'm going to just leave it this way and then of course camera Camera settings you can increase the focal length and also zoom into the building a lot have a clear view of what you're looking for what you're working for and then once that's done you can go into the export tab and then since you have our one image selected we're going to export that image and then go on to select it's just the one image currently i don't have my path tracer enabled but once you select that one image from here you can then go hover over and scroll all the way down to start export and then select the one export and you're done that's basically how you can go about visualizing this select the folder and then have the rendering process the image and complete the process